the pediments, once again, are the sculptural decorations, the sculptural elements that we see at either end of the temple, just beneath the roof line. And what we're seeing here is a rough reconstruction of what may have been there. Of course, these are damaged before Lord Elgin ever shows up, although he has no problem taking the bits that are left. The east pediment, heavily reconstructed because a lot of it's missing, uh, depicts the birth of Athena. The center is destroyed. What remains is, a spe is an, excuse me, is a look at the spectators at Athena's birth. So when we look at this, we have Athena here, just off to the right. We have Winged Victory giving her a crown. We have Zeus sitting off to the left. And the story is that Zeus, on his wedding day to Hera, will cheat on her with another figure. And they get into this whole post-coital turning into animals sort of contest. And eventually she turns into a fly. He turns into a lizard of some form and eats the fly. It's weird. The Greeks do some strange things in their mythology. But the idea is that suddenly this goddess or nymph that he has a relationship with is now living in his head as a voice that he can't get rid of. Months later, he's complaining of a splitting headache. And eventually he calls on Hephaestus, standing behind him right here, to come to him with an axe and split his head open, which Hephaestus does, and Athena pops out fully formed, adult, and fully armored. That is what's known as a splitting headache. What you'll notice also in this piece is that almost every male is nude or mostly nude, whereas none of the women are nude at all. In fact, here's from the East Pediment a detail of several goddesses, and we see them all heavily clothed. In fact, this is something that will come back to haunt you during the medieval Romanesque and Gothic, as well as the Byzantine in the second half of the semester. What you see are the women are covered in huge amounts of fabric. It looks like 20 yards of wet silk covering their body. Why wet? Because the sculptor is trying to show that he understands the anatomy beneath it. And so he's trying to use this lightweight material to highlight certain elements to make them appear feminine. Why does this haunt us later? Because Christianity will pick up on this, especially the Byzantines who are, who are appearing in the exact same area. And what they're going to do is change the silk to wool to hide really all of the body detail, but the concept is the same. They're borrowing from the Greeks this idea of heavily clothing any kind of female form. The West Pediment is a competition between Athena and Poseidon to determine the patron deity of the city of Athens. And this is crazy. The Athenians are basically judging the gods. And this reflects Athenian arrogance. Could you imagine passing down a legend where, hey, by the way, we as a people got to judge which god we were going to follow? It sounds ridiculous today. You could never imagine it in a modern society. And yet the Athenians are egotistical enough to say, you know what? That's what we did. This is the story. This is what happened. And Athena provides them with the olive tree. Poseidon gives them a saltwater spring. Saltwater spring sounds kind of odd, but it would be a source of salt. Salt was very, very expensive. And so what they would do is they would collect the brine, they would boil it off, they would collect the salt. It actually made them a lot of money. But, of course, they go with Athena. Otherwise, we'd be talking about Poseidopolis or something along those lines. In terms of the corners, of course, pediments always have this issue. What they do is they take the figures. Obviously, these figures are a little bit smaller than the central gods. Uh, in this case, more hierarchy of scale than issues of design. And what they do is they make those figures seated or reclining or kneeling. As they move back into that corner, it creates something that's going to be much more realistic. And the whole thing would have been painted, again, very brightly, very gaudy, so that you could pick out those details from the ground. Remember, you're standing... 50 feet from this piece, even if you're standing directly beneath it. So you need that color to really draw out the details so it becomes relatable. What is the good of beautiful sculpture if you can't understand what the heck it's trying to tell you? So these were definitely painted, of course, stripped 
in modern or more modern times of their paint and these are exteriors so they probably the paint probably wore off and by the time it becomes a church no one's going to be repainting it these are pagan gods so we end up with something that today looks white but at the time would have been bright gaudy and easily legible 